join with me in our opening prayer found in your bulletin. God of new life, the empty tomb shouts your love to all of creation. May we, with the women, go forth in joy, proclaiming your good news to all people for the sake of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated.
so that's not important. I can color Easter eggs, and I can hide them better than any dull rabbit. <laughs> as soon as I get this hopping thing down, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, what do you think Easter is all about? Well, decorating eggs, and Easter egg pellets, eating chocolate mummies, oh, even if it has peanut butter in it, that makes it better. <laughs> Dressing up in new clothes, having dinner at Grandma Bodie's house, oh, stuff like that. All those things are lots of fun, but Easter is about something way more important. Well, yeah, I forgot the Easter bunny. Well, the Easter bunny is fun too. But that's not what I meant. Easter is really about Jesus. Wait, it's not Jesus' birthday again, is it? <laughs> he doesn't get two birthdays a year, does he? Boy, am I going to be mad if he gets two birthdays a year. Well, we celebrate Jesus' birthday at Christmas. Christmas is the beginning of the story about Jesus. And Easter seems like the end of the story. But it really isn't. It's the beginning of this story, too. Wowzer. That just scrambled my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out, but I'm just coming up scrambled eggs. <laughs> How can Easter be both the end and the beginning of Jesus' story? Well, Jesus is God's son. He died on the cross, so our sins could be forgiven. But if that's what he's doing now, and he died, then it is the end of the story. Well, that's what Jesus' friends thought. But they soon found out that they were wrong. The place where Jesus was buried was empty, and he wasn't there. Well, sir. This is better than a mystery story. How could it be empty? Well, Jesus came back to life. He was alive again. Wowzer! Is that what Easter is really about? Yes, that's <coughs> why we celebrate Easter, because it's the beginning of Jesus' story. It's not the end. Jesus lives today, and he'll live forever. Oh, Wowzer! Easter is the beginning at the end of my rental bunny business, too. <laughs> I think I'm going to make another sign that says, Jesus lives. Oh, you know, you know what? Good. I remember hearing a song, a song that, that ends with, Jesus lives. Hey, you know, Miss Merlin, do you know a song over there that has a chorus that says, He lives? I do. I think the people here know it. You know, that might be a better song to sing than, than Theo Cottontail. Theo Cottontail. <laughs> I mean, can you, can you play like a little introduction and maybe anybody who knows that chorus, maybe we can all sing it together because that's a better song. I don't know what I'm going to start with. Sure. Sure.
lesson this morning is Jeremiah 31, 1 through 6. The joyful return of the exiles is the heading of my Bible verse here. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built. O virgin Israel, again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there is there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. The psalm this morning is 118. And it's 118, 14 to 24, and at the very end, I will pause, and I'm going to ask you to say the response at the bottom of the front side of your bulletin when we get through Again, 118, and it's 14 to 24. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does validity. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does validity. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open me to the gates of the righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. And you can join with, join with me in the response. This, this is the day the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our second meeting is from Colossians. It's 3, 1 to 4. <coughs> so if you have been raised with Christ... Seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on, that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ is your life, excuse me, when Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. And our. Last scripture reading for today is Matthew 28, 1-10. And this is the resurrection of Jesus. After the Sabbath, at the first day of the week, was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has been raised, from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to see Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. 
Go and tell my brothers, go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, John. The title of this morning's message is Great Expectations. So when I was little, I always knew this Sunday was a special day, you know, this Easter Sunday. It would start a few weeks in advance. My mom would take my sister and I out shopping for our Easter outfits, you know, a new little spring dress for my sister and a bonnet and white gloves and for me, a, a dapper sports coat with a bow tie. Anybody buy me? New clothes for this Easter Sunday? I see a couple of hands, you know. I got a new tie on here. <laughs> but the thing I look forward to the most was the Easter egg hunt. Anybody done one of those yet? Oh, yeah. yeah. And the Easter Easter basket full of chocolate and marshmallow bunnies, soups, <clears throat> and other treats. And then as I got older, and I'm talking about like middle school, high school. I came to appreciate how Easter Sunday at church was not like any other Sunday. The first thing was that we didn't go to church on Easter Sunday. We would actually go Saturday evening at 11 o'clock for the great Easter vigil service, and it would end on Easter uh, Sunday, early in the morning. There were a lot of scriptures read, a lot of hymns sung. They all recounted God's saving work through history. And there were always baptisms, at least one, but sometimes more than one, and communion. And the church just smelled, was full of Easter lilies and smelled like Easter lilies and incense. The, the place would be smoked up with incense. And the clergy would wear these ama amazing, these dazzling robes, weaved with gold and everything. It was just amazing. It was like unlike any other day of the year, and I came to really look forward to it more than the Easter baskets. And in some small way, I think maybe that's a little bit how Mary and uh, the other Mary felt when they went to Jesus' tomb that Sunday morning. See, the women in Mark, excuse me, in Matthew's gospel isn't like the women in Mark and Luke's gospels. You know, these women, they were not going to the tomb with oils and spices to anoint Jesus' body. Jesus had already been anointed before his crucifixion back in Bethany at Simon the leper's house by an unnamed woman. And they weren't worried about who was going to roll, roll away the stone from the tomb because Joseph at Arimathea had already taken Jesus' body and prepared it and wrapped it and laid it in his uncut tomb and rolled the stone in front. Everything had been taken care of. So why were the women there? Why did they have, why did they come to the tomb? Maybe they were grieving, you know, like so many do when they grieve loved ones and they miss them and they want to be close to them, so they may have come to the tomb to be near to Jesus. Matthew says they came to see the tomb. You see, these women, they had been there on Friday when Joseph of Arimathea had put Jesus into the tomb. Matthew says they were standing across from it. They saw Joseph roll that stone in front of the tomb. So when they came, were they expecting something different? I mean, we come to expect that Easter is different. You know, we're used to the Easter egg hunts, the Easter baskets, new clothes, more flowers than usual, perhaps a different worship service. And we know it's not like any other day because... It was the day that Jesus was raised from the dead. It's the day that sin and death were conquered. It's the reason why we come to worship every Sunday. Because every Sunday is a reminder of what God did on that first Easter Sunday. But Mary and the other Mary, they were like little children. They had no experience of what Easter was about. They didn't know what to expect. Maybe they didn't expect anything. Maybe they thought death had the final word. 
like the male disciples who had deserted Jesus and were in hiding. It seemed like the religious and political powers of the day had won and silenced Jesus forever. And they were afraid that they would be next. They may have even heard Jesus say on that cross on Friday, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If Jesus had felt forsaken by God, why shouldn't they? But maybe, just maybe, the women, in some small way, were hoping beyond hope to find something different. Far, to, follow, to borrow from Charles Dickens, maybe they had great expectations. See, Matthew tells us that there were women at the crucifixion looking from a distance. And he tells us they were followers of Jesus all the way back in Galilee. And they had provided and cared and ministered for Jesus all that time, from Galilee all the way to Jerusalem. These women, they were the quiet disciples intimately bound to Jesus from those early days in Galilee. And as his followers, they, I imagine they heard Jesus tell them that he will die, will be raised on the third day, and will come again. And so maybe they remembered, and maybe they had come to the tomb to see the tomb with great expectation and hopeful anticipation. These women had watched silently from afar, but dared to believe the truth of Jesus' promise and had come to see the tomb. Despite all the naysayers, despite all rationality, despite the, face that the, or the fact that the tomb was guarded by Roman soldiers, they hoped beyond hope that something miraculous, something beyond our understanding or explanation would happen. They weren't disappointed, were they? No. I mean, there was this tremendous earthquake, and this dazzling angel came out of heaven and landed on top of the tomb and opened it up. And while all the soldiers fell down like they were dead from fear, the women were filled with awe and joy. The angel tells them to go in and take a look that Jesus has been raised. But don't hesitate, don't linger to go quickly and tell the good news to the other disciples. Now, I remember years ago when I was little, I was at this Easter egg hunt. It was a big Easter egg hunt. It was over at the Roman Catholic High School, this big hill filled with these plastic Easter eggs. And I had my basket, and we're all racing out there and moving them up because most of them had just candy, but one of them had a golden ticket in it for this grand prize, some chocolate bunny. And I remember as I was going, all of a sudden I opened one of the eggs, and my gosh, there was the golden ticket. And I was so excited, I dropped my basket and ran back to my parents because I was so excited I had to show them the golden ticket. I think the women were like little children, experiencing Easter for the first time, opening that first egg, or maybe the egg with the golden ticket. And they ran with joy and excitement to share that wonderful good news. They don't seem concerned in the least how their news is going to be received. But I can't help but wonder in that time, in that patriarchal society, with a bunch of men, 11 disciples, who are already probably lacking faith and were in disbelief, would receive their news. So maybe that's why Jesus appeared to them on the way, to confirm the angel's message, to dispel any remaining doubt, to bolster their testimony to encourage them to stand fast in the face of possible denial and implausibility. Like a child experienced Easter for the first time, there is great expectation and hopeful anticipation of what might be. For me, that golden ticket was how big that chocolate bunny was, and it was big. It lasted a whole year. I couldn't believe it was like this. <laughs> Through Jesus' life and ministry, the women had watched Jesus heal the sick, feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, clothe the naked, and provide for the forgotten. And through the stories Jesus told, through his parables, they learned about the kingdom of God and how, 
life lived differently now, it's modeled by Jesus, it was a taste of what the kingdom of God was like. They saw and experienced new life in the kingdom of God even before the resurrection. And I think that's what gave them the foundation of their faith and hope. The hope beyond hope in Jesus' promise to be their Emmanuel, God with us. Not only in life, but in death, and in the life to come. It is the mystery of faith that we proclaim as we prepare you know, when we're reciting our communion with liturgy. What are the words? Christ is, has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. There will be times in our lives when life will knock us down. Our health may fail. Our loved ones' years might be cut short. We might lose a job, a home, a friendship we cherish, or the plans that we had for our lives may go horribly off track. And in those times, we might find ourselves asking, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But even then, even there, God is with us. Jesus' death may seem like the final word. The depths of life's despair may feel like the final word. But the good news of Easter is that even then, God is with us, working for our good. It may be hard to see in the moment, to feel it, to comprehend it. But in remembering the mystery of faith and all that it embodies, Jesus' life and death, resurrection, and his coming again, we can cling to hope and the promise that even in the midst of tragedy, we will come to experience resurrection. Jesus' life modeled for us how to experience a resurrected life today. Jesus' death testified to the pervasiveness of sin and death in the world. And through his resurrection, God saved us from sin and death and raised us to new life in Christ. Even in the low points of life, like those women at the tomb, who were grieving at the same time they had it, who were looking hopefully, we can witness to the hope and the promise of the mystery of faith by the way we live in the presence of death and in the way we provide and care for those who are facing it. Brothers and sisters, this is the good news. Death doesn't have the final word because Jesus, our Emmanuel, is with us today, tomorrow, and always, in life, in death, and in the life to come. He is risen. The he people said, indeed. The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now on this Easter Sunday, we're going to take an opportunity to remember our baptism. So our service, I think it's in the old Yes, continues on page 50 of your hymnal. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated in Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without Christ. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what, is, what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, with your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord, in union with the Church? which Christ has opened to people of all ages and nations, nations and races. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? 
Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge us the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set the clouds in a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Your children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Spirit. He called his disciples to share the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. The dying and rising of the first to the nations is glory on all these. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water, call to us our uh, remembrance, the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you washed away our, uh, our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives. The dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise, praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Fun part. <laughs> Remember your baptism. 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 It's raining. <laughs> Not to be forgotten. Well, oh, I forgot those guys up there. You, you got lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Spark plugs. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. By dying, Christ destroyed our death, and rising, he restores our life. In giving us his spirit, he grants us peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. So this time I invite you to turn to your neighbor, exchange exchange signs of peace and reconciliation and love.
standing in awe of your unfathomable grace, Lord. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. With grateful praise, we lift our voices to, in song to you. We celebrate the coming of your reign of justice and peace, in which all people belong to you, and all our sisters and brothers. God of light, you hear our prayer. Lord, the oceans roar and the skies thunder in celebration of the risen Savior. Teach us to nurture all that you have created, so that everything might join in praising you. God of life, you hear our prayer. Lord, breathe new life into those weary from the work of serving in positions of leadership. Give them hope in you, that they might strive to bring your justice and mercy to all. God of life, we Lord, send your healing rain upon all who suffer, body, mind, or spirit, especially those that we're about to lift aloud, out aloud this morning, those you also hold silently in our hearts. At this time, I invite you to lift up any things that you would like to lift up aloud, or just hold them silently and pray for them this moment of uh, quiet. Endure. Maynard Watkins. <coughs> Maria. It's a uh, all the thing. You're on a garage. Mary Jane. Lord, help us to remember them in prayer, all those that we've lifted up, either in our hearts or aloud, as we go about our busy days. God of life, Lord, bring this world closer to you, Heavenly Father. Let all your children be at peace. Show us how to live and love as you love. God of life, we lift up all the saints who have come before us, whose lives of faith have been an inspiration. As we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, make us sure of the resurrection of all people, that we might one day see all your saints face to face. God of life, confident in the promise of the resurrection, we lift all these prayers to you, saving God, in the name of your blessed Son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And at this time, I invite uh, Bet. well, Betty, well, yes, to come forward. So as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. So I invite Betty to come forward for our musical offering today and for the ushers to come forward um, to take up our offering. Thank you. 
And now, as Jesus taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we partake of the one loaf. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. So for communion today, we just invite you to come up to the rail, and we'll serve you from here. And then if you'd like to uh, take some time along the rail to pray, if you're so moved to do that, you can walk the stand along the rail or kneel, or if you'd rather just return to your pew, uh, you can do that as well. We'll start with this side of the congregation, working from the back, coming forward, and then we'll move to this side, working from back to forward. And uh, this is the Lord's table. It is not the Methodist table, it is not the United Methodist table, and so all are invited to receive God's uh, nourishment. So I invite you to come, starting with the hoods in the back, and you can come on forward.
If everyone who would like to receive communion received.
back page for our closing benediction. Go forth in joy to love and serve God in all that you do. We are sent in the name of the risen Christ. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. And the God of peace, who raised to life the great shepherd of the sheep, make us ready to do his will in every good thing through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.